Hello, this is Mike, nostressmike.com. Uh, I wanted to tell you the story. I don't think I I don't think I've told this story, but I keep coming close to it, but something always stopped me from telling. Uh, we, uh, I was crossing the border in El Carmen, Mexico and uh, Guatemala, and I've always say it's the most dangerous crossing I've ever been at. And this time was probably about about six years ago. I was with my wife, and she already had uh, her severe stroke, so she was a little slow, and uh, mentally she's a little slow. She could function and stuff, but she would get tired easily. So uh, we were crossing the border, and uh, uh, you have to stand in line to uh, get your papers stamped and. Uh, it's, it's time consuming and I normally do all this stuff myself and uh, I, I normally don't listen to people when it comes to crossing the border because I don't trust anybody and not even my wife and but at the time like I say I knew it was hard on her and uh, I say at that time there would be hundreds of people at the border and I was scared I was I would lose her I always kept her close to me and so uh, I, I was scared to turn my back because she might walk off or somebody would, would uh, show her something and she'd she'd go away from me and then in the crowd I'd lose her and when you lose somebody and there's hundreds of people uh, in a place like that I don't know what you do that's one problem that I don't even want to encounter. So uh, uh, she suggested that we paid somebody to do our papers for us. And like I say, I don't trust people. And I sure don't like giving my passport to anybody and let them get out of my sight. And then on the border, I have no idea how much a passport would, be, would sell for. So, I mean, what's the difference between somebody stealing your passport or you give it to somebody and they don't return it, you know, I mean, so, but she said, oh, well, yeah, these people, that's what their job is, is to help people uh, do all the paperwork. And so, I, uh, they, uh, it was two of them, two people. And so I thought, well, as long as I can keep my hands on one, I'll give the papers to the other one, and then this way I can beat the hell out of this guy to get my papers back. And so this one stayed stayed with us. And uh, but anyway, he says, and uh, of course they don't speak English. I don't know if they do or not, but they sure don't let me know they do. And so, uh, but anyway, uh, they said that we need to wait, and it'll it'll be about 15 to 30 minutes before they get it done. And uh, so they uh, so uh, they suggested we wait uh, in um, this uh, uh, restaurant, uh, cantina kind of thing. And uh, I, on the, the video about uh, uh, crossing the Guatemala-Mexico border, May uh, 2015, in that video, there's... I marked uh, where this restaurant was. I marked it on the video so you can see where it was. This is the story behind that. And, uh, but anyway, uh, so I said we can, we can wait in here. And, and so then, you know, normally, now this, uh, one of the biggest difference between me and other people is there's very few things I'm scared of and when it comes to physical harm um, somebody hurting me that's one of the things I really don't ha have hardly any fear on and so uh, but I do try to stay in a place where I can uh, protect and uh, in other words a lot of people like to put their back to the wall now me I want to get right out amongst them. I mean, I, I don't like chasing people down. I want to be right there, right where I can get my hands on them. So, uh, 
So we went upstairs to this 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 place, and so you have this stairway going up. And uh, so we get up there, and then they went to the back, in the corner in the back. And they said, we can sit here and uh, get something to eat or drink and wait while they do the papers. And I, and I looked around and I said, well, I think I want to be over here in the balcony, right where I can look, look out and see what's going on. And so we got a table right there. And uh, so, <laughs> so here we got the table right there. And my wife was on one side of the table. Okay, it was me. Uh, like, like this was the edge of the balcony. And then here would be the table. My wife was right here. I was on this side of the table. And then right here on this side of the table was the one guy that they, they left with us. And behind him was the steps. So uh, what happened is uh, we waited. And uh, we waited, and the longer we waited, boy, I started getting restless because I don't like having people with my papers. And so then he, uh, then, so the guy that left, uh, he came back. And then when he came back, he said that they're having a lot of problems and we're going to have to do some bribing. And it's going to take um, a few minutes. Uh, few minutes more to get this done and it's going to take more money and that's called bait and switch in other words they have a low price they get you hooked and then they raise the price and so right when they said that and it, you know and this is what the guy told my wife and my wife told me well give them more money it's going to cost more and I said no we're not going to do that and then so then uh, uh, so I'm talking to my wife, and then the one guy left, leaving the same guy that's been with us. He's he's still there, and then so then she's saying, well, you need to go. You need to trust these people. You need to. I mean, these people are going to get things done. And then so right about then, up the steps comes the same guy, and he brought three friends. <laughs> now these two guys were kind of small. They're probably about like that. The three guys that they brought were more my size. And uh, so then they came up. And then, so then they came up. And then so I had my wife. We had the table here, the balcony. And then the guy's sitting right there and the stairs behind him. Another guy next to him. And then over here was the other three with my wife to my back. And then so then, uh, then they were explaining to my wife that they need more money. <laughs> and see, when I say no, I'm not going to give you any more. And you bring your friends and you insist on more money. I look at that as a robbery attempt <laughs> so so anyway it was funny because I'm standing I'm standing there with them I got one hand right here got one knife right there so got that okay now this guy he stands up he's got the the railing to his back the other guy has got the stairways to his back. So already I know these two are gone. This guy's going off the balcony and this guy's going down the steps. So then I only have the other three to deal with. Now uh, on the other side I had a knife on the other side with this hand. So I'm holding the knife with this hand. So both of them, I'm casual, like that. And then, like that, I got my knife. Okay. So in other words, what's going to happen, it's going to be bam, bam. And these two, one's going over the balcony, one's going down the steps. 
and I'm left with three others and a knife in each hand. And, uh, and those two are going to be gone in less than a half a second. And so I said no. I'm standing there casually and then everybody's got their chests all puffed up and then I step to these two leaving my back to the three but I know they have to make some kind of movement to come to me these two are already in my reach and so I'm waiting everybody's puffed up and then everybody unpuffs. <laughs> I step back and all of them, and they, they laid all the papers down on the, the table and then everybody went down the steps. <laughs> so nothing happened. Uh, that's the story. My wife had no idea what was going on and uh, I ended up doing all the paperwork myself. Uh, but I say when you are confronted you need to have a plan and the more confidence you have in your plan the more it shows and I always say nobody wants to get hurt so those five sensed pain they might have thought they could whip up on this old man. But some of them knew there was going to be some pain involved. They didn't realize how right they were. Like I say, this is the stuff that I do. This is the stuff I prepare for. Not only with plans, but with my Tai Chi, my stretches, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I know my capabilities. But what's best is I know other people's capabilities. And they have no idea what I'm capable of doing. So you always have a plan. You always have the means and the abilities to carry out that plan. And when you have that, you can go any place, you can do anything. This is Mike, no stress Mike.com.